Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing today? It is an afternoon, not in the morning, as when I would make the videos. Um, <clears throat> this morning I couldn't figure out what to read for the video, but I'm going to try of where I am at in my Bible. I'm actually in the third book of Moses, called Leviticus. <clears throat> And so we'll see how this goes, but um, I hope your day is going well. And here we go, I just started, so we're at the beginning. The Burnt Offering And the Lord called unto Moses, and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, Ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him and he shall kill the bullock before the lord and the priests aaron's sons shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces and the sons of aaron the priest shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priests, Aaron's sons, shall lay the parts of the head and the fat in order up upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep or of the goats, for a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring it a male without blemish. And he shall kill it on the other side of the altar, northward before the Lord, and the priests Aaron's sons shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar, and he shall cut it into his pieces with his head and his fat, and the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water, and the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to the Lord be of fowls, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or of young pigeons, and the priest shall bring it unto the altar and ring of his head and burn it on the altar, and the blood thereof shall be wrung out at the side of the altar. And he shall pluck away his crop with his feathers, and cast it beside the altar on the east part by the place of the ashes. And he shall cleave it with the wings thereof, but shall not divide it asunder. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice and an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Oh, excuse me. The grain offering. And when any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil upon it, and put frankincense thereon. And he shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, and he shall take there out his handful of the flour thereof, and of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar to be 
an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. And if thou bring an oblation of a meat offering, bacon in the oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. And if thy oblation be a meat offering bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour unleavened, mingled with oil. Thou shalt part it in pieces, and pour oil thereon, it is a meat offering. And if thy oblation be a meat offering bacon in the frying pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. And thou shalt bring the meat offering that is made of these things unto the Lord, and when it is presented unto the priest, he shall bring it unto the altar. And the priest shall take from the meat offering a memorial thereof, and shall burn it upon the altar. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And that which is left of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. No meat offering which ye shall bring unto the Lord shall be made with leaven for ye shall for excuse me made with leaven for ye shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering of the Lord made by fire. As for the oblation of the first fruits, ye shall offer them unto the Lord, but they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet savour. And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt, neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. And if thou offer a meat offering, of thy first fruits unto the Lord, thou shalt offer for the meat offering of thy first fruit, fruits, green ears of corn dried by the fire, even corn beaten out of full ears. And thou shalt put oil upon it and lay frank incense thereon. It is a meat offering. And the priest shall burn the memorial of it, part of the beaten corn thereof and part of the oil thereof, with all the frank incense thereof, it is an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And if his oblation be a, oh, excuse me, the peace offering. And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be a male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering, offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fat that covereth the innards and all the fat that is upon the inwards. And the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And Aaron's sons shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And if his offering for a sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord be of the flock, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. If he offer a lamb for his offering, then he shall offer it before the Lord, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation, and Aaron's son shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about the altar. Forgive me, this, this is a lot of, um, you know, sacrifices right and killings which is if you've made it this far forgive me i should have probably spoke sooner but it is a lot of killing of offerings to the lord um how true this is honestly i do not know 
but I do know that fire is his form of, you know, wrath. Um, his wrath, um, I guess you could say, is the flames. Um, but I, 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 I don't know. I'm just forgive me. I don't know if you're if you're still listening. This is a lot to take in um, from Leviticus. This is the beginning of the offerings. But um, let us continue. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fat thereof, and the whole rump. It shall, it shall he take off hard by the backbone, and the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver, with the kidneys, it, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto the Lord. And if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of it and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. And he shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the, kid and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them which is by the flanks and the call about the liver with the kidneys it shall he take away and the priest shall burn them upon the altar it is food it is the food of the offering made by fire for sweet savor all the fat is the Lord's it shall be a perpetual statute for your generation throughout all your dwellings that Ye eat neither fat nor blood. Oh boy. Well, blood is kind of, you know, obvious, right? And fat is not healthy for you, and there's a reason for it. And, uh, and this right here, I, I guess, there you go. That's why it's not good, because uh, it belongs to our Heavenly Father. And I pray that, forgive me if this, I don't know how, how true this is, because as you know, in the Bibles, people make things the way they want to, but I'm going off of, but this is true. This is the word of our Father. So, and there's a reason, you know, because you eat fat, you know, it's not good for your body. And definitely don't want, why would you want to eat blood? So, yes, just, yes. The sin offering. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord, concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin which he hath sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord which is in the tabernacle of the congregation and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and he shall take off from it all the fat of the bullock for the sin offering the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them which is by the flanks and the call about the liver with the kidneys it shall he take away as it was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace offerings and the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the burnt offering and the skin of the bullock and all his flesh with his head and with his legs and his inwards and his dung 
Even the whole bullock shall he carry forth within, without the camp unto a clean place where the ashes are poured out, and burn him on the wood with fire, where the ashes are poured out shall he burnt. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which not be done and are guilty. When the sin which they have sinned against it is known, when the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin, and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the Lord, and the bullock shall be killed before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar which is before the Lord that is in the tabernacle of the congregation and shall pour out all the blood at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take all his fat from him and burn it upon the altar. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering, so shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them, and shall be forgiven them. And he shall carry forth the bullock without the camp and burn him as he burned the first bullock. It is a sin offering for the congregation. When a ruler hath sinned and done somewhat through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord his God concerning things which should not be done and is guilty, or if his sin wherein he hath sinned come to his knowledge, he shall bring his offering a kid of the goats, a male without blemish. He shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat and kill it in the place where they kill the burnt offering before the Lord. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of burnt offering. And he shall burn all his fat upon the altar as the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And concerning his sin, it shall be forgiven him. And any and if any one of the common people said through ignorance, while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord, excuse me, of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and be guilty, or if his sin which he has sinned come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering a kid of the goats, a female without blemish for his sin which he hath sinned. And he shall lay his hand upon the herd of the sin offering, and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood thereof with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and shall pour out the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat is taken away from off the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven. And if we bring a, a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female without blemish. And, it sh and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering and slay it for a sin offering in place where they kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering. Uh... And the, and the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and shall pour out the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar, excuse me, according to the offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for his sin that he hath committed, and it, sh it shall be forgiven him. All right, I I'm gonna cut, cut it short. Um, these so these were offerings at the beginning of Leviticus. There's still more offerings from what I'm looking ahead at. Yes, there's a lot, but I really need to use the restroom.
So this is part one of the offerings at the beginning of Leviticus. I hope you enjoy it. Um, it is it is a lot of um, it, it is a lot of sacrifices, and it is questionable. And you think, Lord, you, did you really want all this? Is this true? You know, and um, all I could do is ask the, His Holy Spirit Himself and our Lord and Savior Yahshua to let me know: Is this really true? Is is this all true? The sacrifices, and um, I could see. You know, um, when I think about it, I guess one way to look at it is that instead of your death, right, physical death, and then eternal spiritual death, um, that the sacrifices take the place of your death. So when I look at it like that, okay, now it makes sense to me. You know, they take the place of, you know, of your sin you have committed, you know, um... And instead of your death, it is their death. Because also now I'm really thinking about it because our Lord and Savior, most know him as Jesus. I know him as Yahshua. He paid his debt. No, forgive me. He paid our debt in sin by being our sacrificial lamb. Uh, as like a an offering, you know. I, I don't want to look at it that way because that's so brutal sounding. Um, but... He gave his life to pay our debt in sin of generations at his time while he was here in the future, as in our present and those who are to come. He sacrificed his life to pay our debt in sin so that we may know everlasting life through him and our Heavenly Father. And when I look at it that way, okay, these offerings make sense. Because we're in the book of Moses, the third book, Leviticus, and this is before our Lord and Savior came into, you know, into the fold, I guess you could say. I believe this was before he was brought into the world because I was reading from the beginning Genesis and I recently finished Exodus and now Leviticus. I haven't been at the part where they speak of Jesus, you know, or Yahshua. Um, so this is all before he came. Our Lord allowed him to come into this world with us. So now when I think about it that way, all these offerings, yes, I can see why. I can see why our Father would, you know, to pay for our debt, for our sins. Um, these offerings, you know, took the place of us. So it makes sense. But um, this is part one of Leviticus. This is the offerings um, where we are. And until next time, everyone take care. Enjoy your Saturday, excuse me, enjoy your Saturday, and um, catch you later.